Hi, welcome to an IBIS Notebook Plus Starburst tutorial where we'll be doing some analytics on the NYC Taxi dataset. My name is Dewey Huynh. I'm a senior solution architect at Starburst Data who will be guiding you through this companion video. Just a quick overview. Um, you'll have to install some prerequisites, which is some pre-work prior to the video. You'll be installing the Trino library for Python alongside IBIS Trino framework and Jupyter. Those will be located in the beginning of the blog post. Secondly, we'll get some files ready for querying in this video. We'll download the NYC Taxi dataset in Parquet format alongside a companion lookup table that is in CSV. We'll use Starburst Galaxy Schema Discovery on top of your lake to register those tables. And then we'll finally connect to Starburst Galaxy using IBIS. From there, we can then go to an IBIS notebook and walk through a full notebook that I've created for you today to show some of the power of the two tools. We'll then write back a table that you've kind of manipulated and played with, filtered back to Starburst Galaxy for your dashboarding needs or ad hoc analytics, or again, further interactive notebooking by your fellow coworkers or friends. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll do is you'll be in the nyc.gov website where they provide public data, uh, publicly available data sets for free. We'll be using the yellow taxi trip records today. So if you scroll down to 2023, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, but in our case, I'm using the January data set in Parquet format. So if you click this, it'll download that to your local computer. Uh, if you scroll down to the taxi zone maps and lookup tables heading, you'll find a taxi zone lookup table available in CSV. We're gonna use that to do a join to extract a little more information from our table in order to gain some insights. Once you have those files downloaded, I've pre-downloaded them into my local MacBook, as you can see here. We'll go to your local lake storage, whether it's an S3 bucket or in GCS or Azure Data Lake. For schema discovery to work within Starburst Galaxy, we like to enforce kind of best practices. And that is organizing kind of tables by folder within your lake structure. Um, this is best for kind of, again, the way Parquet does it. Uh, you can see here I have a taxi zone NYC folder alongside a zone lookup folder. If you go in, you can see I've already pre-uploaded the yellow trip data from January 2023 in Parquet. And if I go back here, the zone lookup table exists here in your S3 bucket as well. So once you've done that, we're gonna go into Starburst Galaxy. So some of the pre-work led you to a link where you sign up for a domain. I'm gonna go into the user interface to show you how to register these tables. Let's navigate to the Starburst Galaxy user interface. Prior to the video and the blog post, you would have created a Starburst Galaxy domain and followed instructions on how to link your data lake catalog over to Starburst Galaxy. Once that's done, we can proceed to the next step using schema discovery. To do that, let's navigate to the left-hand side here and go over to the catalog section. We're gonna navigate over to our data lake catalog that we created. And from here, more information will pop up where you can click the user or schema discovery tab and hit run discovery. Your screen may look slightly different if you haven't run discovery before, but once you do that, we're gonna copy and paste our URI over and then name our default schema to something that you want because this will be the schema in your data lake where your tables will be created. In my case, I will create a video schema for the specific video tutorial. And in advanced settings, I'm going to hit run full discovery. Once we run discovery, we'll let Galaxy do the work. It detected the schema in the structure that we did earlier. Two folders, two tables. You can see the taxi zone NYC and the zone lookup have their own paths. They're both different files, CSV and Parquet, but Galaxy will be able to tech that and create all tables. Once we do that, it will automatically automate the table creation for you. And as we wait, you will then be ready to query these tables in IBIS. To confirm, we can go back to our query editor and open up the catalog. I'm just gonna skip over to the next section where you can open your Jupyter Notebook and start playing with IBIS. So now let's go to the Jupyter Notebook 
user interface. If you've installed the prerequisites and take the provided notebook, you can open your terminal and enter Jupyter space notebook to launch Jupyter and we'll arrive here. We're importing IBIS and PANDAS as alongside an options.interactive mode equals true to prettify a lot of the tables, otherwise they'll just look like square columns and curly braces. In my case, my connection details will be done in environment variables. I suggest you do the same. But if you're working locally and you know, you know your notebook isn't going anywhere, feel free to enter the details manually. So IBIS has a specific syntax for connection. We're going to store that in a Python variable, ibis.trino.connect. And in my case, I don't have OAuth 2 or single sign-on, but if you do, you can uncomment these little lines and import the Trino OAuth 2 authentication scene here. So I'm going to store that in, and we don't make the deep connection quite yet. When you do anything with your IBIS kind of table expressions, it'll send over the SQL over to Starburst Galaxy. So it's quite awesome and quite a cool technology. None of the data will go from Starburst Galaxy over down to your local machine. IBIS will do the translation and send the commands over to the cluster. So in con.list tables, you can see the two tables that were created during schema discovery show up. This is awesome. You're doing notebooking experience with cloud compute. IBIS has the ability to store table expressions um, within a con.table in your remote cluster. So we're going to do that so we can start playing with the NYC Jan trips and the zone lookup table. One is in Parquet and one is in CSV. If you were curious and you looked through the CSV files, we can actually see and check the schemas are what you kind of uploaded. Galaxy is able to automatically create schema for you. So you can see the zone lookup has location ID borrow and the IBIS table itself with the January trips has kind of what you expect out of a taxi data set. We can preview the data using the slice method. There are multiple ways to do this um, in IBIS and in Python. But we're going to use something like 0 to 10. And in IBIS, you can see it's prettified. You can scroll left and right and see that the data looks like it's there. We want to try and understand the data set a little more. Often data analysts will use multiple commands to do that. We're going to do very simple kind of analytical modeling. We're not going to do production level data engineering or analy analytical queries here. It's just to get you started with the notebooking experience. So with this order by, you're able to kind of list um, trips by in descending order, kind of like an order by in SQL. Oh, but you'll notice that the data set itself, we, we are not sure about kind of all the rows implemented at all. Passenger counts are null, rate codes are null. Um, there's not a numbers sometimes available. So in IBIS, you can kind of change together expressions with filter similar to a where clause in SQL. So in our case, we're going to do a, the table dot filter, where um, you can refer to the table dot kind of column wouldn't equal zero and or that's not a number to make sure it's not kind of make sure it is a number actually. Um, and if you do that and then I kind of output the table itself, you'll see that we get a slightly more clean table and that the non and stuff has filtered out. You can optionally choose to run the next command uh, in order by again uh, and see that the large values have been removed. In our case, this is submitting again a query to the, the Galaxy cluster. You can see there are some edge cases with some trip instances. If you were a data analyst or data engineer, you'd want to investigate further why and maybe clean up the rows. But Again, this is just a sort of. I want to kind of add a column to the data set. We're going to use the delta and filter. So I can kind of check out ride duration just to see what that means. And you can notice that IBIS is actually able to create a table slash column in isolation. Or you can decide to add the column itself to a, a table using the mutate method. So mutating is able to kind of showcase that. You can see here we've added, we've just selected certain things like vendor ID, red minutes, and trip distance to understand the data set a little more. Um, maybe I just want to see the first three. Again, we have the head function. Lastly, I'm going to show some basic kind of aggregations from the new kind of tables that you made. So maybe our insights, we wanted to do a 
total revenue, total distance dot all, uh, find the max kind of distance itself. We can do a dot name. And what that will do is kind of within your notebook, your table will have a new column to understand kind of some of the aggregations you're doing. So in uh, this last line, we can find the average ride. I'm rounding it to two decibel places. So you can kind of chain together expressions just to make it more usable. So once we run that, the insight comes in. Oh, you can see kind of the longest trip is quite long. Um, total distance is quite large. Revenue, you can kind of convert. But again, just to kind of showcase some of the power of IBIS, I'm just going to go into kind of understanding what, why is it so long? And let's go. Oh, in this case, we notice that the pickup date is on the 23rd and the drop off date is on the 30th. How could that be? Um, the trip distance still says zero. Um, and we have a little pickup location. Um, Perhaps kind of something was wrong in the calculation earlier. Again, as a data analyst, you want to investigate that. I'm not going to make any comments. I'm just showing you sort of the functionality that you can do with an IBIS. I'll just kind of remove that row for the purposes of this tutorial. And then we're going to have that clean data set available for us as new insights. Something powerful is obviously the ability to join data sets and tables together. If you're unable to do that, you might not get kind of aggregations or, or lookup tables to add information. We haven't played with our zone lookup table yet. Just to double check that it's still there, I'm going to do that. Run that. You can see the borough, zone. This information is a little more interesting. OK. Um, I'm going to try and join the tables. But while kind of creating the tutorial, I noticed that kind of the pickup location ID is a different data type than actually the location ID here in the zone lookup table. Um, the join data will actually, we're going to show a cast on the right side here just to make sure that the types um, are the same. And IBIS can do that within its own function. So if you don't do this, it'll throw an error, but IBIS is able to handle that with kind of casting. So I do that for you, and you can kind of see the, the join data up and running. Some of the last, the last part of the video I'll show you is just one more function, just kind of a group by with the, the join data sets together. Uh, in my case, I'm going to kind of aggregate the trips, the total revenue, and then just group by zone. Once we run that, we're going to submit that query over to the Starburst cluster. It'll do some work. And you can see here, um, most of the revenue, well, we're, we're ordering by total revenue, air trip, airport trips, have the most revenue for taxi companies. That sounds kind of self-explanatory. Uh, number of passengers seems quite large, and the average distance is quite high compared to other places in New York, given the proximity of the airports to New York City. If you want to see what SQL the IBIS generates, you can use the IBIS.2SQL method. And that will generate the SQL um, that's being sent over to the Starburst cluster if you're interested in optimization. Okay, this last section is kind of advanced functionality um, using the bucket function. As of the recording of this video, the function that I'm using, the dot bucket, isn't available yet. You can choose to uncomment this line and upgrade to IBIS Framework 7.1 in order to use this to, to do something like a group by week within IBIS, which could be really cool. But the last thing we'll do is we can actually write tables back within Starburst that you've created within IBIS. Okay, So we'll do a con.create table. And IBIS will do all the necessary translations in the back end and create that table for you. So there you have it, a quick tutorial with IBIS and Starburst Galaxy available for you. Thank you.